Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and this video is a, an attempt to show uh, a large amount of coincidences uh, that are happening and uh, things that are written in the Bible about our end times. And uh, my, my observation is, is that uh, people in power clearly read the, the same Bible as I do and are orchestrating events and uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, bottom line is, uh, let's start off with uh, President Obama, okay? In Daniel's prophecy, there's a guy called, there, there's this guy of our end times who's called the abomination that causes desolation, okay? Now, abomination and obamination is uh, almost the same thing. Now, in Jesus Christ's message of Matthew 24, he says, uh, you know, there will be this abomination, or which I'm saying is Obamination, that causes desolation. And uh, it's a sheer sign that we are in our end times when he's in a place where, where he doesn't belong. Now, they're impeaching him. Well, they're trying to get him out of office because he's not a natural born American. But you know what? That's a clear end times prophecy of when the Obama nation that causes desolation is in a place where he doesn't belong. And you know what? I seem to be the only one who's talking about it online. When I Google these subjects, I seem to be the only one. Now another one of these where I seem to be the only one talking about it is where it, in Daniel's uh, 12, it says there that uh, 1290 days after the Obama nation that causes desolation is set in place, uh, there will be this push to end sacrifice. Okay? And uh, Obama was inaugurated on uh, January 20th, 2009. And uh, 1290 days later was uh, August 2nd. Now, at that time, banksters were making deals with congressmen about the American debt, which is all about something called warehouse receipts. At that time, I was in a courtroom in Ontario pleading that my warehouse receipt was paying off the world debt and they could keep the change. And it was soundly rejected by uh, Judge Dornheimer in the Supreme Court of Ontario, and uh, which followed shortly thereafter, as to Daniel's 8, it says there that I took a stand against the Prince of Princes, and uh, this is coming to a head, okay? Now, okay, regardless of that, okay? Uh, why is it coming to a head? In uh, uh, Luke 21's version, it says there that you know you're in your end times when the city is surrounded by armies. Well, the Olympics are coming up, and as we speak, armies from the world, all kinds of United, you know, UN forces, special forces from all over the world, are surrounding the city of London. Okay, uh, there's the story of uh, of. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2 Thessalonians 1 and the reality is is 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2 Thessalonians 1 in outlines uh, what clearly is today what we could call a solar wind followed by a solar flare which is the breath of my Lord okay and there's a clear reference there and in 2 Thessalonians 2 it says that the the one who holds back will continue to hold back until taken out of the way. And due to circumstances around my life, I think that's me. And it says there that then the lawless one will perform, will appear and perform all kinds of wondrous miracles and through fraudulent signs. And that has everything to do with uh, harp doing earthquakes and all sorts of things. And, Project Bluebeam 
which is all about miraculous signs. And the reality is, is we're being steered into uh, this being used as a tool for triggering World War III. Now, that is a, a true and imminent threat. And as I read the Bible, and especially 2 Thessalonians 1, it says there that you will not see Jesus until there's a rebellion. And then in 2 Thessalonians 2, it outlines these fraudulent miracles and wondrous signs start happening by the, the lawless one. And uh, it sure sounds like that's when the rebellion happens. And if authority has to push the buttons all the way to initiating a World War III scenario, then uh, uh, authority has clearly picked which side a whole bunch of people are on who are going to hell. That's as simple as that. That's what the Bible says, okay? Now, what's about to go down is clearly outlined in 1 Corinthians 15. Now, I say flat out, I am like the man, I am the one like Adam. Okay? And I deliver the other everything to my Lord's feet. He hands it to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ comes down and gets all the glory. That's all there is to it. That's the way it reads. And it says there, you know, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Well, you know what? How did the world know there, that was going to happen? Because of a solar flare. Okay, I can show you the prophecies in connection. But you know, nobody... And frankly, again, I'm the only one in the world who's actually printing and saying anything that the breath of my Lord is a solar flare. Now, that's an anomaly all by itself. To me, it's self-evident. And yet, nobody wants to bring up that subject. Okay, but what's described in Matthew 23, Isaiah 59, Isaiah 54, Isaiah 40, Isaiah 3 and 4 are solar winds, or solar flares followed by my Lord. In Matthew 23, it says there'll be a flash from horizon to horizon. And, you know, in, when Jesus Christ died, the sun went out for an hour. They said it was a, a an eclipse. No, it wasn't. It was a solar flare that knocked out the sun. And a big solar flare, you know, like that literally knocked out the sun for an hour. And two and a half days later, uh, Jesus Christ walked the face of the earth. Now, the reality is, is it takes two and a half days for a solar wind to get from the sun to here. Now, that would explain, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. It would explain how people will actually don't go, don't leave from outside, you know, like, uh, don't try to hide, face these things, go out in wide open spaces. It says those who try, who face this will be saved and those who try to hide from it will be destroyed. It's, it's the, the solar flare that's coming is the breath of my Lord and it will transform us all into spiritual flesh. And it's the greatest gift given to mankind, and it's being offered to those in authority, exactly as to the biblical promise, and it really comes down to a choice of repent or perish. And I'm convinced that they intend to perish. And basically, you know, until the last day, I have no idea what's going to go down, but I'm pushing every button to do the gentle spirit. The voice from the West is being called out, and the timing of what's coming down is uh, all ending up in late spring, early summer, when the fig leaves sprout their shoots. And the, the dynamics of what's coming down uh, requires um, uh, faith and that's all it comes down to faith okay uh, God loves all the foolish ways that people worship him and worship is the word work and peop all kinds of people in the world 
are working for good and you will be rewarded real soon okay uh, what is being portrayed as I see it is the harvest of bad weeds before the you know before we are all enter into the kingdom of God which is happens in the blink of an eye it's a clear message to the world and exactly as to Moses it says it doesn't matter if it comes from the sky or comes from the earth it will still because this solar flare will the energy that's coming through will literally go through the planet and it really won't matter which side of the planet you're on okay where you are it's going right through those who are trying to hide from what's going down will be destroyed those who face it for what it is which is god returning to to you know zion we are returning to zion all prophecy says is we go to zion and zion is this thin ribbon that will ignite at god's command and uh, if you think it's january 21st 2012 well ask any experts any time between now and then or after only god knows when it happens but I am pushing every button for it to happen this spring. And uh, some people will hold it against me, but it has to be done. And I'll carry this on in another uh, video, just because it's uh, time restraints. Thank you very much.